Story Time. My name is Mark Lawson. I'm a former Navy SEAL with over 15 years of service, and I've seen things most people can't even imagine. I've fought in war zones, conducted deep sea operations, and trained in the most extreme environments on Earth. I thought I'd seen it all, until the mission that changed everything I thought I knew about the world. This isn't an easy story to tell. I know most people won't believe me. Hell, if I hadn't lived through it myself, I probably wouldn't believe it either. But I'm not telling this for the skeptics. I'm telling this for the people who deserve to know the truth. It was 2017, somewhere in the North Atlantic. I can't give you the exact coordinates, classified information, but it was cold, dark, and far from any friendly shore. Our team had been deployed on what was supposed to be a routine recon mission. Intel had picked up some unusual signals coming from a small island, and they wanted boots on the ground to check it out. No big deal. We'd done this a hundred times before. There were six of us on the team, me, Harper, Mendoza, Taggart, Shaw, and our CO, Lieutenant Graham. All seasoned operators, guys I trusted with my life. We were inserted by chopper just before dawn, dropped about a click away from the island's northern shore. The plan was simple, move inland, investigate the source of the signals, and get out. As soon as we hit the ground, though, things felt off. The place was dead silent. No birds, no insects, just the wind and the distant crash of the waves. And the smell. It was like a mix of salt and something metallic, almost like blood. We moved slowly, weapons ready, eyes scanning every shadow. After an hour of hiking through dense underbrush and rocky terrain, we reached the signal source. It was a cave entrance, half hidden by thick foliage and jagged rocks. The mouth of the cave was wide, dark, and uninviting. Lieutenant Graham signaled for us to halt, and we gathered around while he checked the Geiger counter. Nothing unusual. All right, we go in slow, he ordered. Harper, you're on point. Mendoza, Taggart, you take the rear. Keep it tight, stay sharp. We moved into the cave, our lights cutting through the blackness. The air inside was cold and damp, the walls slick with some kind of slimy moss. The deeper we went, the narrower the cave got, until we were practically crawling. And then, just as suddenly, it opened up into a massive chamber. That's when we saw them. They looked like nothing I'd ever seen before. At first, I thought they were rocks or some kind of large, smooth boulders. But then one of them moved. It lifted its head, revealing a long, serpentine neck, and stared at us with these huge, pale eyes that seemed to reflect the light from our torches. The body was thick and muscular, covered in scales that glistened in shades of gray and green. The head was elongated, almost reptilian, with a row of sharp, jagged teeth jutting from its mouth. Jesus Christ, Shaw whispered, his voice barely audible. What the hell are those? There were four of them that we could see, but who knows how many more were lurking in the shadows of that chamber. They moved slowly, deliberately, like they were studying us, sizing us up. They didn't make a sound, but there was this low vibration in the air, like a deep hum that you could feel in your bones. Back out, Graham ordered, his voice steady but tense. Nice and easy. Don't provoke them. We started to retreat, moving as slowly and carefully as we could. But then Taggart's boot slipped on a loose rock, and he fell, his rifle clattering against the cave floor. The sound echoed like a gunshot, and that's when all hell broke loose. The creatures lunged. They moved faster than anything that Sai should have been able to, like they'd been holding back until the right moment. One of them charged at Taggart, its jaws snapping shut with a sickening crunch. We opened fire, the cave lighting up with muzzle flashes and the deafening roar of gunfire. Bullets hit their mark, but they didn't slow down. The rounds seemed to glance off their scales, barely penetrating. It was like shooting at a tank. Fall back, Graham shouted. Move, move, move. We ran, firing over our shoulders, trying to keep those things at bay. Mendoza was next, something grabbed him from behind, yanked him off his feet, and dragged him screaming into the darkness. I didn't look back. I just kept running, my heart hammering in my chest. 
We finally burst out of the cave and into the open air, but those things were right behind us. I could hear them, hear the scraping of their claws on the rock, the deep rumbling growl that seemed to shake the ground beneath our feet. We made a break for the shoreline, hoping the chopper would be close enough to hear the gunfire and come back for us. It felt like hours, but it was probably only a few minutes before we heard the distant thump 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 of rotor blades. The chopper came into view, and we flagged it down, waving frantically. The pilot saw us and began to descend. Just as the rope ladder hit the ground, one of those things broke through the tree line, barreling toward us like a freight train. We scrambled up the ladder, climbing as fast as we could. I was the last one on, and just as I was about to pull myself into the chopper, I felt something brush against my boot, a claw, sharp as a knife, slashing through the leather and just missing my ankle. I kicked out, and the pilot banked hard to the right, the sudden jolt sending me crashing into the side of the aircraft. We got out. Barely. But not all of us. We lost Mendoza and Taggart that day. Officially, they were KIA in an undisclosed location. But I know better. We all do. When we got back to base, they debriefed us, took our statements, and then told us to keep our mouths shut. They made it clear that this wasn't something the public needed to know. National security, they said. They even implied there could be consequences for speaking out. But what we saw out there was no top secret enemy tech, no experimental weapon. It was alive. It was real. And it was hunting. I don't know what those things were, but they're out there, somewhere in the dark corners of the world. I'm telling you this because people need to be aware. These creatures do exist, and they're not some myth or legend. They're flesh and blood, and they're not the only ones. We've only scratched the surface of what's really out there. So if you're ever out in the wild, and you feel like something's watching you, or you hear a strange hum that you can't quite place, trust your gut. Get out while you still can. Some things are better left undiscovered. Some things are better left alone. I'm not the kind of guy who scares easy. 15 years as a Navy SEAL will do that to you. I've been in firefights, survived ambushes, and stared down death more times than I can count. But there's something that happened a few years back that I haven't been able to shake. It changed everything for me and the rest of my unit, the 4th Navy SEAL Special Forces Group. I've told this story only once before, and I was met with more skepticism than I cared for. I don't blame them. This isn't the sort of thing you want to believe. But it's time more people knew. Maybe it'll help them prepare for what's out there. It was 2019, and we were on a training mission off the east coast of the United States, near a stretch of rugged coastline in Maine. Nothing too out of the ordinary, standard exercises, underwater demolition, nighttime beach reconnaissance. The area was remote, quiet, not a soul for miles. Perfect for what we do. But from the get-go, something felt off about this mission. We were briefed by some guys who didn't wear the usual insignia, people I'd never seen before. They seemed to come out of nowhere, men in black suits and sunglasses who didn't quite belong on a military base. They didn't tell us much, just that there were some unusual readings coming from that area. All we were supposed to do was survey, report back, and avoid engagement at all costs. Now, you might think that'd be a red flag, and you'd be right. But orders are orders. So we geared up, me, Carter, O'Reilly, Thompson, and our CO, Lieutenant Marcus. We were inserted by a fast boat just after dusk, landing quietly on a narrow strip of beach surrounded by thick pine forests and rocky cliffs. The waves were calm, but the fog had rolled in thick, making visibility near zero. Not great conditions, but we dealt with worse. We made our way inland, moving slowly, carefully, our senses tuned to the environment. The forest was dead quiet. No birds, no rustling leaves, just the sound of our own breathing and the crunch of our boots on the damp ground. The deeper we went, the denser the fog got, and the more it felt like something was watching us. We reached a clearing after about an hour, where the fog seemed to cling like a living thing, swirling low to the ground. That's when we noticed it, a faint glow, like a soft, blue-green light, coming from just over a small ridge. 
Lieutenant Marcus gave the signal, and we moved in closer, staying low and quiet. When we reached the top of the ridge and looked down, we saw it, a massive, pulsating object half buried in the rocky ground, like some kind of twisted, metallic root system stretching out in all directions. The light was coming from its core, glowing and dimming rhythmically, almost like it was breathing. Around it, the ground was scorched, and the air had a strange, acrid smell, like burning ozone and sulfur. Jesus, what the hell is that? O'Reilly whispered. None of us had an answer. I'd never seen anything like it, not in all my years of ops. The thing was huge, at least 30 feet across, and there was a hum, low and deep, like the vibration of a massive generator. Get some pictures, Marcus ordered. Document everything. We took out our gear, snapped a few shots, and that's when it happened. The hum grew louder, the light from the object flared bright, and suddenly, everything went still, too still. It was like the whole world held its breath. Then, without warning, a burst of static ripped through our comms, and I heard a voice, clear as day, inside my head. Not through the radio, but directly in my mind. Leave. I froze. I looked at the others, and I could see from their faces that they'd heard it too. We weren't the type to spook easy, but this. This was something else. Marcus signaled for us to pull back, but before we could move, the ground began to shake. The light flared again, blindingly bright, and suddenly, something started to emerge from that thing. At first, it looked like a shadow, a dark, shifting mass that seemed to distort the air around it. Then it took form, solidifying into a shape that shouldn't have been possible, like a man but elongated, with limbs too long, joints that bent at impossible angles, and a face that was nothing but a smooth, black void. The air around it seemed to ripple, and I felt an overwhelming sense of dread, like I was staring into the abyss. Open fire, Marcus yelled. We lit it up. Bullets tore through the night, and I watched as they seemed to bend around the thing, like it was made of smoke. It moved fast, too fast, and suddenly, it was on us. Thompson went down first. One swipe of its arm, and he was thrown 20 feet like a ragdoll. Carter and O'Reilly kept firing, but it didn't do a thing. The creature lashed out again, and I felt a searing pain across my side. I went down hard, my vision blurring. The next thing I remember is Marcus grabbing me, dragging me through the trees. I could hear more gunfire, more shouts, and then… nothing. Silence. We made it back to the beach, where the extraction boat was waiting. They must have heard the shots, seen the flares. They pulled us aboard, and as we sped away, I looked back. The fog had swallowed everything. No sign of the thing, no sign of the clearing, just darkness and mist. Back at base, we were debriefed. They took Thompson away on a stretcher, he was barely conscious, his face pale and eyes wide with shock. We never saw him again. Carter and O'Reilly were both injured, but nothing life-threatening. As for me and Marcus, we had to give our statements to the same men in black suits. They listened, nodded, and then told us we'd imagined it, that it was some kind of hallucination caused by an unknown gas leak in the area. Bullshit. We were ordered to keep quiet. They said it was above our pay grade, that it was a national security matter. But whatever that thing was, it wasn't some gas-induced hallucination. It was real, and it was alive. After that mission, they disbanded our unit. No explanations, no ceremonies. We were scattered to different posts, and all our reports were sealed. I tried to dig for more information, but every time I got close, I hit a wall. I was warned to back off, for my own good. But I can't let this go. I'm telling this story because people need to know. There are things out there, things we aren't meant to see or understand. Whatever we encountered in those woods, it wasn't from this world, or if it was, it's been hiding for a long, long time. And I don't think we were the first to find it. So if you're out there on the east coast, in some remote, foggy stretch of forest, and you hear a low hum that makes your bones vibrate, leave. Don't investigate, don't play hero, just leave. Because whatever it is, it doesn't want to be found. And it sure as hell doesn't want us to know it exists.
I'm posting this story here because I don't know who else to share it with. Every time I bring it up, people find it hard to believe or just assume I'm flat out crazy. I'm not sure what I saw, but I know I saw it, and now I'm terrified. A few days ago, I went out with an old friend I hadn't spoken to in years. We live in a small town, so there's really nothing to do here besides hanging out at the movies or going bowling. We went to the movies around 7 pm. And we're out by 9. We still wanted to hang out longer since it had been so long since we'd last seen each other. My friend and I have always been very outdoorsy, so hanging out at a park late at night was nothing new to us. We decided to do just that. We drove to a park I used to go to a lot when I was a teenager. This park leads to a trail, and below this trail is a river. This trail has always been very sketchy. It's so long that if you walk far enough, it actually connects to another city. I never walked the trail at night because I would usually go alone, but even during the day, I experienced some crazy stuff there. The weirdest thing about this trail is that no matter how far you walk into it, the walk back only takes 5 to 10 minutes. I remember the exact day I noticed this. I got into a bad argument with my parents and went to the trail around 5 pm. To get away. I walked for about an hour, listening to music, not even realizing how far I was from my house until I checked the time, it was already past 6 pm. I started walking back with my music still playing. I listened to two more songs before looking up from my phone and realizing I was already back at the field. Those two songs couldn't have been more than 5 minutes long, so I checked the time again, and it was still 6 pm. I don't have the exact time frames, but I know for sure I walked way more than that, and I was immediately sketched out. The river that the trail is connected to is at least 20 to 25 feet below, and during the summer, it dries up, meaning it's even further below. One day, I was taking my usual walk and heard something splash loudly into the water. I thought it was probably just a frog or a rock that fell in, but my entire right leg was soaked. I looked down into the river, confused, it was midsummer, and the water couldn't have been more than two to three feet deep. I have no idea what fell into the water that evening, but there's no way that splash was big enough to soak my whole leg. I left, and of course, the walk back was quick. I never went back to this trail alone again. I told my friend all about this trail, and instead of being worried, he asked me if I would be down to take a walk there again. At first, I said no, but our curiosity got the best of us, and we ended up going around 11 pm. We started walking at exactly 11.37 pm. We kept track of the time. We went left at first. We walked for a total of 11 minutes, but there were way too many bugs and not enough lights, so we decided to go right instead. We saw the sign at the start of the trail at exactly 11.50 pm. My friend looked at me with his eyes wide open. He looked scared but still wanted to see what this mysterious trail was all about. We started walking right at 11.53 pm, and that's when things got very real. We walked for only 4 minutes this time before hearing a soft rumbling noise coming from the bushes. I told him I didn't like where this was going, my heart was racing, and I was scared something would happen to us. My friend brushed it off, saying it was just the wind, and kept walking. We took a few more steps and heard the same noise again, but this time it was loud. We stopped to investigate where the noise was coming from, but we couldn't see anything, so we kept walking. At 12 am. Sharp, we heard the same noise once again, but there was only one bush in sight, the rest of the area was just dirt, trees, and rocks. We looked up to see if it was coming from the trees. What we saw that night is still indescribable. When I looked up, I saw a giant spider-like creature with yellow glowing eyes. It had the face shape of a monkey, but its head was abnormally large. We only looked at this creature for about two seconds before it jumped off the tree and began chasing us. I never looked back, I was too scared, but my friend did. He was a lot less scared than I was and wanted to get a better glimpse of it. We calmed down a bit when we got back to the car and talked about it all night. He said the creature had a lot of legs and a human-like face. I'm kind of glad I didn't look back after all, because he ended up looking more traumatized than I was. We looked up some history about this trail and learned that several people have died here, but nothing related to what we just witnessed. This trail scares me. 
I don't even come here during the day anymore after that incident. Absolutely terrifying. It was September 22, 2018. My friend had enlisted my help as a YouTuber and cameraman to showcase his skills as a blacksmith. We needed a location that was nearby but remote enough that cars or people would not be heard. Since we were on the west coast of Washington, we chose Capitol Forest. I had meticulously packed all my gear and GoPro batteries, as well as multiple LED lanterns because we decided to stay overnight. We went ahead and used my two-man Kelty ultralight tent, a small tent, but it would easily house my gear and protect us from the elements. We got to the location, about 8 miles in, using my black Jeep Patriot. I had also packed a firearm, my AR-15, and he was bringing his 12-gauge shotgun. We took our personal safety very seriously. The wilderness is a dangerous place for humans. It took us approximately 45 minutes to get to the spot I had found. It had a small clearing with road access and was surrounded by a heavily wooded ravine except for the road leading into it. Once we got there, we unloaded our equipment, set up camp, and made shelter. I noted a strange bird call but decided it must have been a raven. The only reason I remember it is that it was so different from all the other birds and didn't sound like a bird call at all. The other reason I noticed it was because of my outdoors and military experience. Anything odd, we make a mental note of it. The bird sounded like a person talking gibberish but in an odd, sing-song manner. It sounded awkward. I looked around to see if I could spot the raven but couldn't find it. After that slight detour, I was setting up my LED lanterns. I set up three around the camp area, each about 20 to 40 feet away from the tent. The nearest one was on the edge of the ravine, near an area with ferns that overlooked the clearest spot for ingress up the ravine. The ferns stood about two half feet tall and were thick. With that done, I began filming as Johannes had gathered enough wood and materials for his presentation. I watched him baton wood and axe through plenty of small vegetation, stand on his knives, and abuse them in almost every way possible. He even drove the tips of his knives into a rock, and the tip broke the rock. His blacksmithing was impeccable. I reviewed the footage I got and made sure to get more b-roll. By that time, it was very dark at 8 pm. We made dinner and tucked into our sleeping bags. I fell asleep almost immediately. I had a great sleep until about 2.50 am. I awoke to something sniffing my head from outside the tent. When I was conscious, I heard it huff in longer intervals three times. I quickly turned my head to Johannes to make sure he wasn't doing a weird snore. I found out afterward that he had taken a medicated gummy. I do not drink, and I do not partake. I am very clean cut. I immediately tried to wake him as I unzipped my sleeping bag and held the AR-15 lengthwise across my body, the barrel pointing toward the huffing sound. Johannes said, X, go back to sleep. It's nothing. Z z z z. He wouldn't wake up. I said in a very loud voice, get. Nothing. There were no sounds of scrambling through the underbrush, no stepping on cold, dry leaves. No animal sounds, no bugs. I was perturbed. I lay awake for almost three hours, holding the rifle and sitting up, waiting for this thing to come through the tent. Around two half hours later, I finally went back to sleep. Johannes woke me up at 9 am. I told him I heard an animal last night and tried to wake him. He didn't remember anything. I said, let's check for prints, I'm very curious to see what that was. I'm not sure if it was because the ground was soft and full of debris, but there were no prints around my tent. I checked on the muddy side of the ravine, underneath the ferns, and on a muddy switchback that deer frequented. I knew deer frequented it because there were several deer prints on it. There was also a strange imprint from what I thought could be a very large dog or bear, which wasn't there yesterday. I walked back to Johannes and told him I had found a strange print that wasn't there yesterday. He said it looked a little like a man's footprint but was distorted due to rain and just slick mud, and we both laughed. I agreed, but we both disregarded that possibility. It started to rain around 10 am that morning, and I asked if I could invite some friends from Tacoma. Jay agreed and they said they'd be there in time for dinner. Today, 
We left all the knives and other equipment in the tent and just focused on making a decent amount of fuel for the fire tonight. The night prior got around 45 degrees Fahrenheit, for those Celsius users, your fingers can turn blue without gloves. It was around 6 o'clock PM when they finally get there. Our fire was burning cheerfully with a nice wood pile next to it. We had spaghetti for dinner. M was a friend of mine in the military, C was M's guest. We talked about a lot of different things, not so many good things were happening in our lives at the time. J and M had a lot in common, as they both got divorced recently. We played cards until around 12. I heard a small rustle in the ferns and leaves area below us in the ravine. I looked up, hoping to see a deer or rabbit. I didn't think much of it, but Jay noticed me looking and asked, what did you hear, T? I told him. About five minutes later, I heard the rustle again, but louder. Then, I heard a soft ting, in the center of the camp. Jay's head swiveled to me. M and C asked what the bell was. I said, something over three half feet tall just ran into my bell trap. The string I had set up was an easy thing. It'd only take something brushing up against it to knock it down. The bell fell from about four feet and had hit the ground immediately muting it but not before the tiny ting rang. I said, shh, we might see a deer. How wrong I was. The guys continued to play cards, but my attention was laser focused on the area with the ferns. Five minutes go by, I check my watch, it's approximately 12.16 pm. I am horrified by what I spotted next. A long, white, white as in as white as marble, with no hair, and black nails, hand, pops through the ferns no less than 20 feet away. It is a strange position, it looks like it's connected to someone crawling through the undergrowth. It's at this time, it makes a small rustle, and the compass rows of companions at the table all look up. Jay is frozen in fear. Matt doesn't see it yet. C can't see it yet. I grab my rifle and stand up, as the next arm comes through the ferns. Jay is to my left, locked onto what he sees. The head emerges, a big, slightly elongated jaw or pseudo snout now exposing a white face and broad, muscled chest. This thing was ripped. I had no issues in believing this thing could rip one of us apart. Looking back at it now, it reminded me of the white orc from The Hobbit, but more feral looking. This moment was strange. I couldn't register what type of animal this was. I was struck dumb in the same instant as I was terrified. My logic followed as thus. This thing, around 7 feet tall, with arms easily 4 feet long, has snuck up on us in the middle of the night. As I raised my rifle, with Jay, turning his head left, and my best friend Matt, still wondering what was going on, Jay said, wait, I didn't. I shot two rounds into its chest. After the two gun shots, it effectively disappeared into the night without a sound. Leave it to the camera guy to have a huge stream light hand light that was 2000 lumens and 60k candela. I ran down the ravine looking for a blood trail or the body, I was fully expecting to see torn up brush, blood and then the body. There was nothing. Not a track, not a drop of blood. I went all the way to bottom of the ravine, about 200 feet down. I heard my friends starting to yell for me nervously as they couldn't see my light anymore. It was foolish of me to have gone by myself, but I needed to confirm what I saw was real. I made the long trip back up, it took me a little over 7 minutes to get back up, and that was me running. If I had wounded it, and it didn't bleed, it probably died in a hole somewhere. That was my logic. I asked my friends if we could leave tonight. They were fairly confident that I had killed it, whatever it was. Jay said he was okay if we could sleep in our friend's big tent. I said they were crazy, I want to leave. They convinced me to stay, saying that whatever it was was scared off or dead, and we could look for it in the morning. So, I told them, no, I'm sleeping in my jeep. You guys can sleep in the tent, you're crazy. They went to bed. It was about one now, and I was cozied up in my jeep. I had nightmarish thoughts of waking up to this thing's face pressed up against the window, but my friend's thoughts were based on fact, they were right, I had probably killed this thing. I woke up at 3 am. I wondered why, maybe my nerves. With that thought, I turned on my overhead light rack and high beams and looked around the clearing. 
That's when I got a side view of the creature, staring at my friend's tent from behind a stump. I immediately turned on my jeep and honked my horn, driving over two small trees to get closer to their tent. The thing had vanished again, down the ravine. I forced them to get into my jeep, leave their car, and leave that night. Something else happened as we were packing up, I swore out of my peripherals, I saw it again, moving to the other side of the densely wooded clearing. With the amount of light coming off the jeep, it didn't like it, or knew it would get spotted immediately. I couldn't confirm that sighting, and if I wasn't scared for my life, I would have been recording. To be fair, I'd like to think you guys wouldn't be focused on that either. I can answer any questions you have. No, I didn't see it stand up. I aimed at its chest. The lead lanterns were more for us getting up and going to the bathroom, and weren't meant for brightness. They just barely illuminated it. Had they not been set up, very likely, we wouldn't have seen it with only the campfire going, only heard it. Something I left out, when it was crawling out of the ferns, I noticed it kept its face angled down, as if to expose as little light to its eyes as possible. I'm not sure if this was intentional or if it was aware of its eye shine. I'm assuming it's something it's learned. I did not see any eye shine from this creature, it was only black around its orbital areas. Recently I've been delving into cryptids and cryptozoology and remembered this story. I did research and realized recently what I saw was a pale crawler. It was probably 2010 to 2011, I was a kid living in rural North Texas. I slept on a loft and top bunk that was right next to a window, so I could see a lot of the land from my bed. There was a massive six foot deep trench full of fossils and rocks outside my yard and we were surrounded by a lot of woods and creeks. I looked out my window one morning after being awake for a while, to see this thing in my yard. It crawled on all fours, it has grayish pale skin and its face looked. Wrong. I rubbed my eyes thinking I was just seeing things but no matter how much I closed my eyes it was still there. It crawled off into the woods. A lot of the local ranches said a bear had come in and killed some livestock, but I'd never seen a bear around there. No one believed me either, I felt crazy about this my whole life and I know for sure that what I saw was a crawler. My grandparents have a property in rural Pennsylvania. It has a forest with a clearing in the middle. The edges of the field are mowed so you can walk around it. The middle of the field has two foot high grass filled with poison ivy. The land has sink holes opening up everywhere. If you drop a rock in one of the holes, you will never hear it hit the bottom. The sink holes are connected to nearby cave systems. Me and some friends were walking around the field at about 10.30 at night. I was in the back. I saw something out of the corner of my eye. A pale white figure ducked down in the grass. It looked about 8 feet tall. It was not human. There are no animals in the area that fit what I saw, so I thought I was imagining things. Eventually we circled back around. In the spot where I thought I saw the thing, the grass was matted down, like something was hiding there. There was no footprints leading away like the thing had really long legs. I think the thing was a crawler. I am currently trying to hunt for proof of the existence of crawlers. I saw a skinwalker last night. Last night, at about 1 am, I snuck out of my parents' house to visit a friend. I ran about 6 miles through rural countryside and back roads and arrived there around 2 am. My friend and I decided to take a walk over to a local winery that has a playground. As we were arriving, it was 2.59 am. We were walking up the winery's driveway, which splits into two about 40 feet ahead. For context, we did not have flashlights, and there were no street lamps or lights, but it was very bright out due to the moon. My friend mentioned that they have horses up here in stables and that we could go see them. As my friend was saying this, a figure on four legs walked across the fork in the road ahead. We stopped and thought, oh, it's the horse. It must have gotten out. But then it stood up on two feet, pivoted in our direction, and stared at us. Its knees were bent, yet it still stood at about nine feet tall. 
It was very, very skinny, had a human-like head, and its arms were probably about five feet long each. It stared at us, then turned away and continued to walk on two feet. At first, my friend and I thought it was a horse, then a person, but we quickly realized it was neither. We began literally shaking and walking backward in fear. We continued walking back to back for about a mile with our phone flashlights on, terrified, as we kept hearing something in the woods. Keep in mind, this is a rural area with trees on each side of us. When I finally got my friend back to their house, I stayed there and called my parents to pick me up. I didn't care if I got in trouble, I was so scared, I just wanted to get home. At this point, it was around 3.20 am, and my parents arrived at about 3.40 am. While I was on the phone, I heard something all around me, breaking sticks, running through the woods, and making noise everywhere. I was about to cry on the phone with my parents, begging them to get there faster. The noises stopped, and about two minutes later, my parents arrived. When I got home, I called my friend to make sure we both saw the same thing, and we confirmed that we did indeed see what we thought we saw. This is not a hypothetical or a story, this happened last night. I'm never sneaking out again. I've heard a lot of strange stories growing up on the Navajo Nation, but there's one that sticks with me more than any other. It's a story my friend Sam from Sheep Springs told me a few years back, and it's been gnawing at the back of my mind ever since. Sam is a straight shooter, the kind of guy who doesn't buy into tall tales or ghost stories, so when he told me this, I knew he wasn't making it up. I could see it in his eyes, the kind of eyes that have seen something they wish they hadn't. It was early November, and Sam and his son, Jacob, decided to go mule deer hunting up in the hills between the desert flats and the thick pine forests. There's this old dirt road that runs up the mountain where nobody lives, just empty land stretching on both sides, with scraggly junipers dotting the landscape before the pines take over higher up. It's a quiet place, a good place to get away from everything. They were driving up that road in Sam's old pickup, moving slow and easy, scanning the landscape for movement. The sun was just about to dip behind the ridge, casting long shadows that seemed to make everything still. They pulled over at a good spot and decided to sit in glass for a while. You know, just watching the hillside through binoculars, looking for any sign of deer moving through. After about 20 minutes, Jacob nudged Sam and pointed. Look, right there, about a hundred yards out, he whispered. Through his binoculars, Sam saw it, a coyote trotting along the edge of a ditch on the left side of the road. Coyotes are common out here, but this one was acting strange, moving almost too slowly for a coyote, like it was stalking something that wasn't there. They watched as it disappeared behind a berm on the side of the ditch. Sam, always up for a chance to take a coyote, decided to drive up a bit to get a closer look. Let's see if we can get a shot at it, he told Jacob. They rolled up the road to the spot where they'd seen it cross, expecting to see the coyote pop back up on the other side. But instead, they saw something that made Sam's blood run cold. There, crouched down in the ditch, was a man. At first, they thought maybe it was a hiker who'd gotten lost, until they got a closer look. The guy was naked, filthy, his hair matted and wild, his skin caked with dirt and who knows what else. He looked like he hadn't seen a shower, or civilization, in weeks. He was huddled there like some kind of wild animal, his back turned to them. Sam and Jacob just stared for a moment, unsure of what to do. Then, as if he'd sensed them, the man slowly stood up, still facing away from them. Sam rolled down his window and called out, Hey! You need help? Are you okay? The man didn't answer. He didn't even turn around. He just started walking away from them, right up the slope toward the tree line, his bare feet crunching on the gravel and dry brush. It was the way he moved that got to them, not like a normal person, but almost stiff, like each step took more effort than it should. It was like he was in a trance. Hey! What are you doing out here? Sam shouted, his voice a mix of concern and frustration. Do you need help or what? Still, the man didn't answer. He kept walking, steady and slow, never once turning to look at them. Sam got out of the truck and took a few steps toward him, 
But something in his gut told him to stop. It was a feeling like every instinct in his body was screaming to get back in the truck and leave. Jacob, sensing the same thing, whispered, Dad, let's just go. This isn't right. Sam hesitated for a moment, but then he nodded. He knew better than to ignore his gut. They both jumped back in the truck, turned it around as fast as they could on that narrow dirt road, and floored it back the way they came. As they sped down the mountain, they kept looking back, half expecting to see the man chasing after them, but he was gone. The tree line swallowed him up, and the shadows were getting long. They didn't slow down until they were back on the main road, the tension finally easing a bit as they saw the familiar landmarks of home coming into view. When they got back to Sheep Springs, Sam told a few of the guys at the trading post about what they'd seen. Most of them just shook their heads, muttering prayers under their breath. One of the older men, a medicine man named Thomas, just listened quietly, his face getting darker the more Sam talked. When Sam was done, Thomas finally spoke. You saw something you weren't meant to see, he said. Out there in the space between the desert and the pines, that's where things go that don't belong in this world. Things that know how to hide, how to take on shapes. Like a skinwalker? Jacob asked, his voice barely a whisper. Thomas nodded slowly. Could be. Or something worse. It's not for us to know. Best thing you can do is leave it be, and don't go back there. Sam and Jacob didn't argue. They knew better than to question a medicine man when he spoke like that. To this day, they haven't been back up that road. And honestly, I don't blame them. There are things out there in the Navajo Nation that defy explanation, things that belong to the old stories, the old ways. I love my home, my people, and the land we call the Navajo Nation. It's a beautiful place, Nijona, but it's also a place that demands respect. There are places you don't go, things you don't disturb. Sam and Jacob learned that the hard way, and they're not the only ones. So if you ever find yourself out there, driving up a lonely road in the mountains, keep your eyes open, and if something doesn't feel right, trust your gut. Some things are best left alone. It's been about eight years now, and I still can't shake what I saw that night. I've tried to rationalize it, tried to make it fit into some box of normality, but nothing adds up. It was around 8 p.m., after last light, and I was walking through a parking lot in the middle of a major city. One of those urban areas where you don't expect anything strange, let alone something that makes you question reality. The lot had decent lighting, those harsh, white fluorescent lights that cast deep shadows and make everything look a little sharper, a little more surreal. I was headed back to my car after grabbing a late dinner. There weren't many people around, most of the shops were closed for the night. The air was cool, and there was this eerie stillness to everything, the kind of quiet that hangs heavy, like something's waiting to happen. That's when I saw it. At first, it just looked like a dark shape, low to the ground, almost like a dog sniffing around. But as I got closer, maybe 20 or 30 feet away, I realized it wasn't a dog. The way it moved, or rather, didn't move, was all wrong. It was on all fours, but it wasn't walking. It was just there, almost frozen, like it was resting on its haunches but without bending its legs. Its face was low to the ground, nearly touching it. The parking lot light cast strange shadows across its body, highlighting muscles that didn't make sense. I remember thinking its limbs looked mismatched, like they'd been put together by someone who'd never actually seen how a body was supposed to work. I stood there, unable to move, just watching it. I couldn't make out too many details, but I could tell it was big, if it stood up, it would have been close to 9 feet tall, maybe more. The longer I looked, the more my mind rebelled against what it was seeing. The rear legs were thick with muscle, almost like a kangaroo's, but there was something off about them. Maybe the knees were bent the wrong way, or maybe they just bent at an unnatural angle. I can't quite remember, but I know it wasn't right. It didn't move its legs the entire time I was watching. The only thing that moved was its head. Slowly, it began to turn toward me, like it was pivoting on an invisible axis. My heart started pounding in my chest as its face came into view. I wish I could remember more about that face. 
It's like my brain has purposely tried to block it out, but there are a few things I can't forget. Its face didn't match the rest of its body. Not even close. I've seen pictures of crawlers online, those pale, gaunt figures with wild eyes and sharp teeth. This wasn't quite like that. The skin was darker, and there was a grin, a sardonic one that stretched across its face like it knew something I didn't. I don't remember the eyes or the nose, just that grin. The teeth weren't jagged or monstrous like you'd expect, they were more. Normal, I guess. Human looking, but even that feels like it's not quite right. I wish I could remember more clearly, but the memory is slippery, like trying to hold onto water. It didn't make a sound, not even a breath. I was close enough to hear it if it had, but there was nothing. Just that awful stillness pressing down around me. I was rooted to the spot, every instinct screaming to run, but I couldn't. My legs felt like lead. All I could do was stare back at this thing, my eyes locked onto that grin. Seconds felt like hours. I kept waiting for it to lunge or to make some sudden movement, but it just kept watching me. There was a strange intelligence behind that look, like it was sizing me up, trying to decide what to do next. That was almost worse than if it had just attacked, knowing it was thinking, calculating. And then, as suddenly as it had appeared, it started to back away, still on all fours, still without moving its legs. It seemed to glide, like it was on wheels, retreating into the deeper shadows of the lot. I could see its outline slowly blend into the darkness, that twisted grin lingering in my vision long after it disappeared. I stood there, staring at the spot where it had vanished, my breath coming in short, ragged gasps. I don't know how long I stood there before I finally snapped out of it, ran to my car, and got the hell out of there. I didn't look back once. I didn't want to know if it was following me or watching from the shadows. I've never told anyone this story before. Not in detail, anyway. People don't believe this kind of thing, and I don't blame them. I've tried to tell myself that it was just a trick of the light, a stray animal, my mind playing tricks on me. But deep down, I know what I saw. I know that thing wasn't any animal or person. It was something else, something that shouldn't exist in a place like that, but it does. And now, every time I'm out alone after dark, I can't help but look over my shoulder, half expecting to see that face again, grinning at me from the shadows. I've lived in Appalachia my whole life, nestled deep in a quiet holler where the trees seem to stretch forever and the mist rolls in thick and low. There's something about the mountains here that makes you feel both completely at peace and constantly on edge. I've always felt safe in these woods, well, at least during the day. But as soon as the sun dips behind the ridges, I keep my distance. The night in Appalachia feels different, and you don't want to find yourself too deep in the woods after dark. There are stories, you know. And while some of them are just stories, I believe some of them are true. Now, I've never seen a skinwalker myself, and thank God for that. But from what I know, the real ones can only exist on Navajo ancestral lands, out in the Southwest. I've heard people talk about how the land itself has something to do with their power, something ancient and beyond our understanding. But there are other things, other creatures, that people claim to have seen all over the country. Strange, humanoid critters that don't fit neatly into any box, and they give me the creeps. I've never encountered one of these things myself, but I've heard some stories, enough to make me think twice before writing them off as nonsense. There's one story in particular that stuck with me. It didn't happen to me, but it happened in the Red River Gorge, part of the Daniel Boone National Forest in southeastern Kentucky. If you know anything about that area, you know it's both breathtakingly beautiful and a little eerie at night. The story goes like this, a group of five or six young folks from the area decided to go night hiking on the natural bridge trail to do some stargazing. It's a well-known spot, real touristy during the day, but at night, it's quiet, almost too quiet. I don't know exactly what year this was, but it's been floating around for a while now. Anyway, they were making their way up the trail, chatting and shining their flashlights around when they saw something crouched down by a tree. At first, they thought it might be a person, someone lost or maybe pulling a prank. But as they shined their lights on it, they realized how wrong they were. 
This thing was pale, extremely pale, like it had never seen a lick of sunlight. It was tall, too, somewhere between 7 and 9 feet, even while crouched. Its limbs were all wrong, too long, too thin, and its fingers. They said its fingers were like sticks, too long and bony to be anything human. The thing just stayed there for a moment, almost like it was sizing them up, its eyes like deep black pits. But it didn't have any eyes, not like we do, just empty sockets that seemed to swallow the light from their flashlights. And it didn't have a nose or a mouth, either. Just smooth, flat skin where they should have been, which is about as creepy as it gets, if you ask me. That's when it stood up. Slowly, like it was unfolding itself from some unnatural position, and they realized right then and there that whatever this was, it wasn't human. They said it stood nearly 9 feet tall, towering over them with those impossibly long limbs, and that was when they felt the first wave of real, gut-deep terror. The kind of fear that makes your body move before your brain even catches up. They bolted. No one needed to say anything. They just turned and ran, flashlights bouncing wildly as they tore down the mountain trail, the kind of mad dash where you don't look back because you know you don't want to see what's behind you. And it chased them. They said they could hear it, hear those long legs tearing through the brush and snapping branches like twigs. It wasn't like any animal they'd ever heard, that's for sure. They ran all the way down to the trailhead without stopping, lungs burning, legs screaming, the whole time expecting to feel those long fingers grabbing at them. When they finally made it to their cars, they piled in and got out of there as fast as they could, not looking back until they were miles away from that place. Now, I don't know if this thing was the same as those skinwalkers I've heard about or something else entirely. But whatever it was, it doesn't sound like something I'd want to come across, especially not out there in the woods at night. I mean, the idea of something with no eyes, no nose, no mouth, and yet somehow still hunting you down? That's enough to keep me inside once the sun goes down, I'll tell you that much. I love living here in Appalachia. There's a kind of peace here that you can't find anywhere else. But there's also a strange energy, an undercurrent that you feel sometimes late at night when the wind is just right, and you hear things that don't belong. I've never heard anything too strange myself, no howls, no unexplainable rustling, but I've heard enough stories from people I trust. People who wouldn't make something like this up. So, yeah, I believe something is going on out there, even if I don't know what it is. Maybe it's just old tales passed down, or maybe it's something more. But either way, you won't catch me out there after dark. I'll leave the night to whatever's roaming around out there, and I'll stick to my porch, where I feel safe. If you ever find yourself deep in the woods around here, especially after sunset, take my advice, stay alert, keep your flashlight handy, and if something doesn't feel right, get the hell out. There's no shame in being cautious, especially not in a place like this. My mom and I saw something in Nelson County, Virginia, back in 2008. We were on our friend's farm the property was very expansive and the surrounding areas undeveloped. It was very late at night, around midnight, and it was warm and humid. From about 30 feet away, we saw some kind of creature. It was crawling around in the courtyard of a semi-abandoned building on the property. This particular building dates back to the early 1800s, but there are newer structures nearby. The creature was large, 7 to 9 feet long, and crawled strangely. By the way it moved, it seemed like it was attempting to remain unseen. It looked thin, almost skeletal, and I remember it being extremely pale and white. I did not get a good look at the facial features, both because of the angle and the low light. I described it on the cryptozoology sub as a cross between a deer and a big cat, but I was really trying to avoid the term humanoid which is by far the most accurate term. After I got my answer of Puma on the cryptozoology sub, I discussed the possibility of that being what we saw with my mom and showed her the sources and pics of Puma's one user had kindly provided. She looked at me like I was crazy and said it had knees. She remembers it being a fleshy pink color and I remember it being white, but otherwise our memories of the creature are the same. One more detail I will add, one of the people who lived on the farm where we saw it would not go to that area of the property alone or after dark. 
They always refuse to say why. After learning what a crawler is I'm convinced that is what we saw, and I believe my family has had other encounters with crawlers too, including a smaller, possibly juvenile, crawler. Thanks for reading. I've lived in this house for years, tucked away in a small, quiet community surrounded by dense woods. Our backyard blends right into the forest, and we've always loved the peace and privacy it brings. But there's a different side to living this close to the wild, a side that I've come to know more than I ever wanted to. It was around 3 AM when it all happened. I wasn't awake at the time, but my mom was outside talking to a friend. They were standing on the back deck, probably wrapped up in one of those late night conversations that seem to get more intense as the hour gets later. The night was still, one of those heavy, quiet nights where the forest feels like it's holding its breath. Then they heard it, a sharp, deafening crack that cut through the silence. My mom described it like a tree being snapped in half, the kind of sound that makes your heart skip a beat. It came from a little ways into the forest on the left side of our backyard, not too far, but far enough that they couldn't see what caused it. They both stopped talking, just listening, when a few seconds later, they heard it again. This time, it was on the right side, just as loud, like something was playing a game with them, moving from one side to the other. That's when they decided to come and get me. I was half asleep, but the urgency in their voices woke me up fast. They told me what they heard, and I could see the worry in their eyes. I grabbed a flashlight, and we all headed back outside, standing on the edge of the forest, shining our lights into the dark. At first, there was nothing, just the usual shadows cast by the trees, the underbrush moving slightly in the cool night breeze. We were out there for a good few minutes, scanning back and forth, and I was starting to think it might have been just a falling branch or maybe an animal. But then I saw them, two small, glowing points reflecting back at us from deep within the forest. Did you see that? I whispered, my heart pounding. My mom and her friend followed my gaze, and sure enough, there they were again, eyes, but not like any I'd ever seen. They were high off the ground, maybe eight feet up, and spaced apart like they belonged to something big. I've seen deer eyes in the dark before, or raccoons, even the occasional bear. But these weren't like that. They didn't have the familiar shine of a deer or the bright yellow of a raccoon's eyes. These were different, almost a duller, more unsettling glow, like they were absorbing the light from our flashlights rather than reflecting it. We stood there, frozen, watching those eyes just hover there. And then they disappeared. For a moment, I thought maybe it was a trick of the light, or maybe the creature had turned its head. But then they appeared again, in a different spot, about 10 feet away from where they were before. There was no noise. No crunching leaves, no rustling branches, nothing to suggest something that size moving that fast. Just silence, and then the eyes, staring back at us from another patch of darkness. It kept doing this, disappearing and reappearing, always about 10 feet apart. It was like it was testing us, seeing how we'd react, or maybe trying to draw us in deeper. I don't know how long we stood there, but it felt like hours, even though it was probably only a few minutes. The eyes never came closer, but they never went away, either. They just moved around in that unsettling, deliberate way. I could feel my heart in my throat, and I realized that I'd been holding my breath without meaning to. My mom whispered, maybe we should go back inside. I didn't need convincing. We slowly backed away, keeping our lights trained on the last spot we saw the eyes. We made it back to the deck and shut the door behind us. We all stayed up for a while, talking about what we'd seen, but none of us had any answers. We tried to rationalize it, maybe it was some strange bird, or a trick of the light, but deep down, none of us believed that. This wasn't the first strange thing to happen around here, either. A few weeks before, I'd heard knocking on my window late at night. I chalked it up to branches tapping against the glass or maybe a bird, but now, I'm not so sure. We've had the occasional deer or stray dog wander into the yard, but whatever this was, it wasn't anything I'd seen before. I'm not sure what it could have been. I've heard stories, like anyone who lives near the woods does, stories about strange creatures, things that don't quite fit into our understanding of the world. 
I've always been skeptical, but seeing those eyes, moving like that without a sound, makes me wonder. Since that night, we've kept a closer eye on the forest. I don't go out there after dark anymore, and I've been a lot more cautious about leaving windows open at night. I still feel safe here, this is home, after all, but there's a part of me that's always on edge now, always waiting for something else to happen. Maybe it was just some trick of the light or an animal that I've never seen before. Or maybe there's something in those woods that we're not meant to understand. I don't know. But whatever it was, it didn't feel right. And I'm not sure I want to find out what it really was. So I just realized this would have been my third skinwalker encounter. I put quotations cuz I'm seriously struggling to fully believe it but it's happened three times now so I'm not even sure what to believe. The first time I was walking back home on some train tracks at midnight on a full moon. My friends left so it was just me when I heard an absolutely terrifying human-like screech in the forest. I thought nothing of it till I heard it again, but closer, so I ran for my life till I got to my car, I was high too so my paranoia was through the roof but dismiss the screams as something that could be explained I just didn't know. The next encounter was also at midnight while I was going for a midnight drive. I stopped on a road with a bunch of farms and a nice view. It was also a full moon. I was whistling with my window open to a song when I swore I started hearing footsteps really close and clearly around my car and my fight or flight fully engaged and I hit the gas as fast as I could and get the F out. I was mainly paranoid of carjacking. But now after what happened tonight I'm rethinking this event too. Tonight, me and my friends lit up a joint and walked into a forest. I started whistling when my friends freaked out and ran talking about skinwalkers and how you should never whistle. I dismissed them as joking, and the second we got out we heard the most blood-curdling, spine-chilling scream from the forest and ISTG I started praying the moment my fight or flight engaged. And I'm writing this now to cope with the intense paranoia of living in a forest while trying to sleep. Edit, all happened in Massachusetts. A bit of background, I, 22 female, am from Southeast Asia, specifically Malaysia, a nice multicultural and multiracial country. Most schools here don't follow the typical American high school setup, where students move between classrooms for different subjects. At least, during my time they didn't, I'm not sure about now, though. Instead, we stay in one classroom, and the teachers come to us. So, our classmates are the same people for the entire school year, depending on our grades. Here's what happened. The year was 2017, and I was only 15 years old at the time. I was absent from school on a particular day, not because I was sick, but simply because I woke up late and decided not to go, lol. I spent the whole day in my room, lying in bed and using my phone, while school went on as usual. Then, around lunchtime, a friend of mine, who was the class monitor and responsible for taking attendance, called me, sounding frantic. She asked if I had come to school that day. When I told her I'd been at home all day, she freaked out. She explained that when she was counting our classmates for attendance, she saw me sitting at my desk and marked me as present. She counted 25 or 25 students, including me. She wasn't the only one who saw me, either. Another classmate, let's call her Tess, said she saw me standing in the hallway before class started. Maria, another friend, claimed she saw me walking up the stairs to the second floor. And Lindsay, Another friend, said she saw me walking next to one of our other friends. When class started, the teacher asked where I was. The class monitor said I had probably gone to the toilet or the teacher's office, because she was sure I was at school that day. But when more time passed and I still wasn't there, she got worried and called me. Hearing these stories freaked me out. What could have tried to copy me? If it were just one person who saw me, I might think they mistook someone else for me but several friends saw me that day and even counted me as present. Ghost or not, it was kind of creepy. Plus, my school is over 120 years old and has a history of creepy occurrences. It has survived wars and possibly other events. 
One of my friends got possessed by some sort of entity once and wrote Arabic words despite being Indian and Hindu, lol. So, was it a ghost? Or just a few kids being delusional? Add-on story, when I was nine, I was in the living room playing a game called Spore on our household PC then I saw my mom in her usual Snoopy dog pajamas, walking from the hallway of our house to my bedroom without turning the lights on. It made me curious about what she was up to, going into my room in the dark, so I followed her. When I arrived, nobody was in my room, I was all alone in the darkness. I could have sworn it was my mother. She or it was not see-through like the ghosts in movies, it was like an actual person, my mom. That creeped me out. My younger sister had also seen me in my own room, even though at the time I was in another city attending college. Creepy, right? I'm not sure whether this is a family thing where something likes to copy my family members or just creepy occurrences. But that's all for my story. Thanks for reading. I was walking through the woods in a state park. Saw a bunch of branches perfectly twisted in a vortex manner that resembled a swirling portal maybe 10 to 15 feet high. Obviously know that somebody made it but still creepy and you get that feeling that you don't know if your mind is tricking you because it almost looks hazy in the center of the branch portal. Kept walking a bit further but then it got dark abnormally early and abnormally quickly. Semi jogging back, didn't go too far deep and somehow didn't pass the portal again but felt a pretty worried even though I knew I was on the path. Got back to the parking lot and it was suddenly daytime again as it had been since it was only mid-afternoon. Still not sure if my mind fed into all of it because I love horror especially creepy pasta and everything creepy or cryptid in nature, but also definitely knew some weird shit happened. I love deep woods camping. Even though backpack dispersed camping is way more fun as it takes you off the trail and really into nature. So this was back in fall 12 in the upper Michigan. I was camping with three friends and my ex and our two dogs. We were somewhere about two hours from the hunting road. We left the car on and came upon this really nice clearing overlooking a good sized stream. We pitched camp dug a pit and tied all the food up in the tree a good 20 or so feet so no bears or other animals would bother us. After about 6 or so hours just enjoying the area, exploring and drinking slash smoking we all got tired and sat around the fire for the night just enjoying nature. Eventually we all went to bed but left the fire going albeit very low, just enough to keep light around the camp. Well eventually at some point in the night I woke up to my dog growling in her deep angry growl and could see the hair on her back standing on edge. Slowly I could hear this hard, heavy sound of leaves and sticks being crushed on and moved around. I then heard the distinct sound of beer bottles clinking and even one popping open. So it was a person or something with thumbs outside in our campsite. Now being the always confrontational person I am I ripped open the tent to find nothing at all except three glass beer bottles standing up on a log that was rounded and damp with morning dew so there was no way possible for those bottles to stay on that log. I grew up in the small town in Nova Scotia, which was founded in the mid-1700s, has a very small population, and is surrounded by woods next to the ocean. All three of my scary wood stories happened there, despite me moving three times, both also in the woods. Once when I was in my teens, I was walking paths through the woods with a friend. These paths are on the grounds of where an old asylum used to be. The asylum was named the Poor's Farm, and was established in 1887. While we were walking we noticed there was an opening with a very little gap between the long grass and the tree line. We had the urge to go down it and see if maybe there would be a view of the ocean. We got to the end and just started waking through the woods when we came across some very old wooden crosses in the ground. No path leading to it just a random opening we happened to find. We both got a really uneasy feeling, and I felt someone was watching me though it was probably just my paranoia, so we turned around and left. 
We always knew there were people buried from the asylum but assumed they were all in the cemetery you see when you first enter the paths. The second was around this same area, years before that. I was about 12, 22 now, me and my best friend would go biking just about every day, and always went to this spot we called the rocks. Just a big weird black rock formation on the water. To get to the rocks, you had to go in a path behind the old playground, the path forked off in a lot of places and a few times we would take a wrong turn but always ended up around the same spot. One day when we took one of the wrong turns, we came across what looked to be a very small cemetery with two or three tombstones. We were too afraid to take a closer look so we just kept going down the path, which after a few minutes of going through the woods opened up to a view of the ocean. As we came through the opening we both stopped dead in our tracks. There was a man, I'm bad with distances and this was 10 plus years ago, maybe 100 meters in front of us. He was staring right at us, as if he knew we were going to be coming and was wearing a top hat and a fancy suit with the long back flaps that could only be described as clothing from the early 1900s. Without a word we both turned around and took off running, dragging our bikes along with us couldn't ride them through the paths due to tree roots everywhere. When we finally reached the playground we both collapsed and were all did you see that. Basically sat there in hysteria for a while. I've always tried to brush this off as two preteens riding off each other's imaginations and over exaggerating the whole thing but to this day it still give me the chills thinking about it and the fact we both seen the same thing. The third was more recent years, probably around 18 years old me and some friends decided to trimed me at the house of the same friend from the last story. We decided to go for a walk to meet up with her cousin. There was a group of four of us, all girls. We were coming down a street with no houses besides one at the very end. As we got close to it I looked up and suddenly something on the front porch moved. Me and one of my friends both stopped, which caused the others to as well, and I asked if she seen it too, which she replied yes. Of course, thanks to the drugs we had taken, the thing took many different forms in my mind before I realized what it actually was. It turned its head and we all at the same time whispered something along the lines of it's a huge cat. One of my friends starts screaming to call the cops, which we all object. What's a cop going to do after a 15 minute drive to use, not to mention we were high as kites, we all stand there contemplating what to do with this big cat looking at us, it crouches down like how a house cat would before attacking. I tell my friends we need to back up slowly until we get around the bend and then run. We do this, and as we're running I start throwing up from the fear while running as fast as I can and collapse in someone's lawn. The lawn happened to had kids baseballs laying around and my friends picked them up ready to fight the creature that never came. We got picked up and spent the whole night trying to figure out what kind of cat it could be since we don't usually have big cats around here. I think we settled on a lynx, though honestly to this day I'm not completely sure that's what it was. Most of our friends don't even believe us. I went mushroom hunting alone in the deep woods unarmed, very dumb idea in those parts, once as I have done yearly since 2014, and I'm pretty sure I was stalked by a mountain lion. I don't really have any proof of this, I just felt unusually on edge like someone was keeping a close eye on me, I'd hear the occasional twig snap in otherwise eerie silence and here and there I'd see non-herbivore droppings. It might not have been a cougar but it very well could be, as it is cat country out there and they tend to stalk people and animals. Also the first time I took my puppy out there on my second to last outing earlier this year, she found a bone and started chewing on it. Besides telling her to drop it I assumed it was likely from a deer or elk and let it be. In responding to this threat it just crossed my mind that a few years ago, Someone found a human skull near there somewhat, and so it may have been from a human. I was in my 20s and about to backpack overseas for a while so my best bud and I decided to have a little farewell camping trip. We lived in Flagstaff, Arizona and she told me about this free creek side camping spot she found. 
It ended up being just right next to this abandoned new age retreat where a lot of people died in their sweat lodge but shockingly that has nothing to do with what happened just added creepiness I guess. We drive up to the site and of the six slightly spaced out camping sites, they're all occupied. One site had a tent set up but no car around it which in retrospect was possibly a red flag seeing as this area wasn't a walkable place where you just cruise around on foot it was off of a highway. Anyways we are already there and it's evening time so we decide to just make our own little site in between the no car camp and the one further down. We were only in one small tent with two small dogs and figured we didn't take up much space anyways. As we are unwinding, we start having some drinks, bad idea, and make a little fire to cook hot dogs on, I can't help but take notice to the campsite without the car just distant enough to now see a man in his early 40s behaving strangely. He looks over at us a lot, at one point he's just standing still in the middle of the creek staring at something for long periods, taking his tent down, putting it back up, clanking pans together behavior very similar to someone who's high on meth or dealing with some sort of mental illness. I start getting this really bad feeling. As it becomes totally dark, we are by the fire when I hear someone approach us. It's the guy. My parents pug was with us he's incredibly friendly to everyone and at this moment he hid under my car. Something I've never seen him do. The man begins talking to us and my completely non-street smart friend invites him to sit down by the fire with us, I know what on earth was she thinking? As he began talking to us I almost immediately knew he was out of whack as he described the endless gold pyramids that were located across the creek and the gold skulls and just weird shit. He mentioned how his sister got a boyfriend in Oregon kicked him out and he was now homeless. He then mentioned in this really uncomfortable tone that he saw us two beautiful girls and couldn't stop wondering what we were up to. That was when I immediately noped, and abruptly told him okay well you can head back to your camp now have a great night in which he got up and walked back over. I immediately told my friend, who was still so oblivious, that we were unsafe and we had two options, risk getting a DUI, leave our stuff behind and get somewhere safe or get her boyfriend here ASAP. She called her boyfriend and he agreed to drive straight to us, 45 minutes, during the 45 minutes waiting for him which felt like an eternity I clutched my knife and his weird behavior continued, pacing non-stop slash clanking rocks together slash jumping in the creek slash screaming at something to get away from him total delusional manic behavior. Her boyfriend finally arrived but the fun didn't stop. Boyfriend had Oregon license plates which is relevant with having some relief of an extra person with us, we tried to relax and have a somewhat decent farewell camp trip until the guy came back again but this time his tone was completely different. When boyfriend introduced himself, scary guy wouldn't shake his hand he had this you encroached on my property type of vibe. He left and then wandered back two separate times each time with some weird delusion. The first time he was going on that the boyfriend stole his cigarettes and mentioned his car in Oregon then I started piecing together that somehow in his delusion he was beginning to think that the boyfriend was the guy that kicked him out in Oregon. We tried to de-escalate and decided to go to bed hoping he would just forget about us and do the same, as if people on meth go to sleep, anyway my friend and her boyfriend passed out immediately and I proceeded to lay away the entire night clutching my knife. He paced around our tent multiple times that night. At one point just as a horror film begins I saw his shadow against the wall of the tent lit by the moon you know just fun things you see moments before you die. He rummaged through our stuff at one point and drank all our beer. Somehow we survived the night and I could no longer hear him as the sun was rising. We got the heck out of there as early as we could. About a year later I went back, why? with a group of people to the same camp area and just around where we camped that one time was an abandoned tent just in a pile a bottle of holy water a crystal and a book about horse training jotted with pages of notes and ramblings. Maybe his? Maybe this place was haunted? Heck I don't know but I'm glad he didn't murder us. I was about 16 when this happened. I was in Brawley, California for dove season with my cousins, dad and grandpa. 
I was sitting at our campfire with my cousins when I kept hearing scratching noises and shuffling coming from a nearby cluster of trees. I told my cousins to stay put and I took my shotgun to investigate, thinking it was coyotes and I'll just shoo them away. Well, I approached the trees and I noticed there was some kind of creature? Or person? Standing behind one of the trees, but I only could see half of its face peeking at me. I let out a who's there? And the one thing turned into six things, all peeking from behind the trees at me. I panicked, started to fall backward and shot off around towards the trees. I stood up and looked back at the trees and noticed the things were gone. I walked over to the trees, gun still pointed. I saw the tree that I shot, with a small pool of fresh blood next to it. I immediately found the blood trail and it led to the irrigation canal that was adjacent to the trees. Well, I also noticed that the blood trail continued on the other side of the canal, which was 15 feet across. There were no footprints or anything. So whatever this was had to jump around 15 feet to get to the other side, it couldn't have walked around the canal, it went on for over a mile. I never told anyone about what I saw. I just told my cousins that I scared off some coyotes. Every year when I went back to that area for dove season, I always wondered if those things were gonna come back for revenge. I live in an area where we have quite a lot of forests and farmland. One night me, my brother, and my dad were driving to his house from my mom's in his truck in an area where it was thick woods on one side of the road and on the other side a thin tree line than a field. We were just listening to the local rock station and talking when my dad yells deer and slams on the brakes and stops a few feet ahead of it. It just stood there and looked at us and when we looked at it we realized it wasn't a deer. It had the body of a large dog, antlers, the hooves of a cow, and a misshapen almost human face. Its legs were hairless, red, and covered in sores. My dad said what the F and we all just kept looking at it and after standing there for a few more seconds it runs up into the woods. I've never seen anything like it again and we never talk about it. I had forgotten about it until I saw it in a dream last night and the memories of that just came rushing back. Last year I went deer hunting and I usually jump hunt. Walk through the bush by myself with an old 30 to 30 lever action. Got out late and I had managed to get out to the back fields, and the sun was just cresting the horizons. Now at this time I usually head in because you're not supposed to shoot half an hour till dark. Well this night I figured I'd go through the cedar groves at the back of the property just to see if there's tracks. The property had been my family's for my whole life and I know it like the back of my hand. Well right as dark crest the wolves, coy wolves which are about 60 to 80 ballsy bastards start up. Now I always enjoyed their howling till tonight. That night they came up behind me and I could hear four howl out less than 50 yards behind me. All I had was four rounds in my gun and a cell phone flashlight. I start walking as quick as I could to get through the cedars a 45 minute ordeal. Where another four wolves had cut me off. I never fired my gun but they blind charged me a few times and would start going into a circle pattern off running circles around me. I'd hear them start to do the same noises as a dog on a deer hunt. Twice they brushed me they got so close. By the time I got out of the cedars I was so happy to have at least a shot but I had an open field to cross and I could hear them on the outskirts the whole time. Also just think of that with only about 5 yards of sight off the cell phone light. It took me an hour to stop shaking when I got in. Driving out later that night I could see where they'd followed me up the driveway and there was 21 or so tracks. Staying out an old cabin I had an interaction with Nanabush, one of the old trickster spirits, I was just finishing up for the night and this bird starts slamming into my window for a solid 5 minutes, middle of February, at 11pm is odd to see a bird let alone one doing this. I don't think anything of it and carry on though till I'm ready for bed. Going for my bedtime smoke, I see the bird clinging to the screen door. Pushing on out it flies at me twice then hits all the windows on that side of the house. 
As it disappears I hear something scuttling towards me and I see a figure three feet tall running on two legs in the dark between the vehicles. I just boot out of that situation and locked the doors and went to bed. I was hunting alone in the middle of the Oregon Cascades, miles from any people. I'm sitting still watching a clearing when I hear a sound that I've never heard before or since. Only way I can describe it is that it sounded like wood cracking together, like someone hit a pine tree with a telephone pole and was doing their best Jose Conseco impression. The first time it happened I genuinely thought it was a gunshot because the initial crack was so loud but the last half of the sound was very clearly a tree being struck and shaking. There was a flood of instant terror once my mind worked out the calculation for how hard you would have to hit a tree to replicate that sound. I'd estimate the source was on the other side of a small valley for me well over 300 yards. I know it sounds stupid but it was such a tremendous show of force I instantly started making my way back to my truck. I've been hunting all my life and I'm an avid firearm enthusiast I go shooting almost every weekend. This was 100% not gunfire. Pine trees and cedar trees will also sometimes make poping sound in the morning and into the afternoon as the sun warms them. It was orders of magnitude louder than that. So I live in the Pacific Northwest, I spend most of my time outside. Usually I hang around what me and my friends call, the island it's in the middle of a river, and can be traveled to when summer rolls around and the water goes down. One day I was out on the island, and I was hearing some strange noises, I knew it wasn't a deer because you get to know the noises animals make after a while. I was getting pretty freaked out by the fact that it was moving around me like a predator would. When you spend a lot of time in the woods you learn when an apex predator is on the hunt, they seem to control every aspect of nature, the wind stops blowing, trees stop creaking, and time stops. This began to happen when the creature was moving around me. Something felt wrong about this creature, I had heard stories of Nez Perce legends, and never really took them to heart until I began to spend time outside. There are things you experience out in the woods that can't, or shouldn't be understood. A lot of Nez Perce tried to explain those things. When I looked around me I couldn't see a thing but trees and brush, but I could hear the movement of something around me. When you know something it's superior in strength it's a law of nature to treat it with respect, so I began to walk away from the area. When I left the sound followed, this is never a good thing, it means that you are the object of their hunt. I began to fiddle with my pocket knife even though I knew it would do anything against a predator that would want to hunt a human. At this point it was getting dark and I was moving faster, that's when I heard it, the screech. Now there's no way I could explain it it just was wrong, I started running and anyone who knows anything about wildlife knows that you never run. I don't know what would have happened if I didn't make it to my little row boat. I would rather not know. Bow Hunter. I set up a camp for a day or two. Keeping my bows and such in a vehicle. This particular year I had my jeep and a tiny tow behind sleeper. So nothing was left out, like knives, bows etc. Just a couple things like tables and chairs. So there I am early morning following a trail, the ground is quickly being dusted with snow, my gill suit becomes less useful by the minute so I opt to go swap to snowy oak camo. I had my little sight set up to drag back a deer, hang it up and clean. When I got to my sight, my cleaning setup that was unused hours ago was still in position, but a pool of semi-frozen blood below it. The fire pit was out, but warm. My table was wiped off but clearly just used. Someone used my sight to clean something, sort of tidied up, and sitting on the footstep to my sleeper, a wax paper wrapped slab of red meat. Looked to me like a decent chunk of venison. No tracks in, but tracks leading out, so they must have come just as the snow started. I packed up and messed right off. I was clearly outclassed by the hunter, and had no idea where they were. Just decided best to go home.
I live in the Midwest and went to Spring Hill for a week as a kid. We stayed in a teepee in the woods, and the first night I woke up to find a bunch of dark figures moving around inside. I couldn't quite make out any features, just silhouettes. I also couldn't move, similar to when I have sleep paralysis. Maybe I was having sleep paralysis then. Either way when I woke up in the morning it was the first thought I had. I soon rubbed it off as a bad dream, until everyone else woke up to find clothes thrown all about the interior of the teepee. The counselor was distraught and started questioning all of the kids. Nobody said anything, including me, but we were all puzzled nonetheless. Nothing was ever figured out. I've experienced a lot of spooky stuff in the woods, but typically nothing I couldn't explain. The most startling thing that ever happened to me in the woods, I cannot explain. I went north to go backpacking with a couple of friends. We stopped at a piece of land my family owns for a night on the way. We were sitting around a campfire far from civilization when we heard the most blood-curdling scream come from the trees right next to us. It sounded like wow. Woo woo. It sounded like a demon banshee child. My one friend fell back in her chair, my other friend immediately ran inside the pop-up camper there, and my immediate reaction was to grab the hatchet nearby and stand at the ready. We didn't hear anything running away, we didn't see anything, and we never heard it again. I have no idea what it was to this day. I've researched every possible call I could find from every animal in that region from night hawks and owls to foxes, coyotes, and big cats. I can find nothing that can produce the noise I heard that night. You're typical not a hunter, but someone who was walking in the woods. It was like September a few years ago. I was walking through the woods by my grandma's house as a memory thing because I used to play in those woods when I was little. I was alone and it was the golden hour, right before dark but not exactly light, I was walking my old path reminiscing about the stuff I used to do back there with my friends. I came across the fort we built out of pallets. At this point I was excited it was still here but as I got closer I realized a homeless person had been living in it. Which didn't really surprise me as it was a common thing for homeless people to do, I keep on my path to the little tiny pond that we used to drink around. That's when I started freaking out because I felt like I was being followed, I kept hearing leaves rustling and I was ready to just go back home, so that's exactly what I did. I'm not dumb I'm not about to die in the woods. As I backtracked back to the house, I heard the loudest most shrill scream I've honestly ever heard which scares me even more. Mind you I could see my grandma's house from where I was, I ran back home and my grandma was out drinking her coffee on the back patio, I went to sit down and she asked why I was out of breath, after explaining the entire story she told me she had been outside and didn't hear a thing. To this day it still freaks me out to the point I won't even go in her backyard anymore. If you spend enough nights camping, weird things will happen. A couple of years ago, two buddies and I did a month plus long road trip around the US. We would camp in US Forest Service or Bureau of Land Management areas, and we were driving my pickup truck so we could get back in some fairly deep wilderness on forest roads. After about 15 nights on the road, we ended up in some BLM land near Black Canyon of the Gunnison National Park in Colorado. It was our last night in Colorado, and we were exhausted from doing a 14er earlier that morning. We found the coordinates of a campsite online, and arrived to the edge of the pavement at about 6 p.m. Ahead of us was a dusty two-track lane that snaked those scraggy trees and brush, and made its way to the top of a hill that had views of snow-capped peaks. We hadn't passed a car in a long time. Our truck makes it to the site easily, but none of us get out yet. We sit inside and look around. There's a fire pit, lots of trees, but also an abandoned couch and some other signs of human waste. Not great vibes. But, it's getting late and we aren't keen on the idea of driving more. We hop out and start walking around, cautiously approaching some garbage bags wrapped in duct tape. This seems like a place that we would find a body, I say to my friends. They agree. 
We notice a trail that seems to go in a circle around the top of the hill, so we decide to check that out before we commit to staying. We find some more trash and human waste, but nothing that makes us feel like we should leave. We decide to cowboy camp, sleep on a tarp beneath the stars, and have a nice fire going. We finish off a case of beer, but even with the inebriation we still feel uneasy. Every couple minutes one of us will shine a light into the woods, thinking that we heard something. Even though this is our 20th consecutive night sleeping outside, it doesn't feel right. But it's late, so we start getting ready for bed. We are all carrying bear spray and headlamps. I step into the woods to go pee, and walk about 15 feet without turning on my light. As I'm standing there peeing, I decide I should turn on my headlamp since the fire messed up my night vision. When I see what the beam of light illuminates, my knees nearly buckle. Jaw is dropped. I stand in silence for 10 seconds before calling out to my friends, guys did you see this? In the center of my beam is a bunch of bleached bones wrapped in barbed wire, hanging from a branch directly above the trail we had walked in the daylight. We would have certainly noticed them in the daylight. They must have been hung once it got dark, while we sat only 25 feet away. The consensus among us was F that, so we snapped a couple photos of it before throwing our stuff in the park and hopping in the truck. We drive a little ways up the road to a national park campground. I've never felt so happy to pay $25 and have neighbors nearby. My hypothesis is that a rancher with a grazing lease put the bones up to scare off the scum that leave all their trash at the campsites. They're probably cow bones. Still scared the hell out of me though. My grandma lives in a house near the woods. She lives with my two uncles, her sons. They usually tell stories about the things that happen there. I'm gonna tell you too. One of my uncles returned from a party, he was riding his horse, tired and a little drunk. It was 3 am and he took a shortcut through the woods. Following the road, he saw a little white blanket near a tree. He got closer and saw that inside the blanket there was beautiful white baby. The night was cold, it was late and nobody seemed to be there so he grabbed the baby to take him home so the next day he could look for the parents. He got on his horse and rode again. After an hour, the horse started to complain, then the baby started to feel heavier and heavier and also, warmer. It got to a point that the baby was too hot and my uncle checked on him because he was scared the baby might have a fever, but what he saw wasn't a baby. He described it as some sort of animal, super hairy, enormous teeth and big black eyes. That thing got even heavier and it was impossible to keep carrying it, so scared as hell. My uncle throw the baby and rode super fast until he got home. The horse was scared shitless too. 2. My other uncle, returned from work and went to bed so he can sleep. On his window, a friend appeared and told him about a big party that was going to take place near and they should definitely go. My uncle was tired, it was late, 11 pm, and he felt lazy to go, because the house of the party was close but they had to cross a little lake. His friend was so insistent that my uncle decided to go. Grabbed a shirt and jeans and followed his friend. They started walking for about 20 minutes, when suddenly he heard a rooster cackle nearby. He then woke up of his vivid dream, and found himself inside the lake, with the water covering him, almost to his neck. His friend was nowhere to be found. He quickly got out of the lake and went running to the house, horribly scared. By the way, I live in Peru. A few years ago I was on a boat with my grandparents up in northern Georgian Bay, I woke up in the middle of the night to a thunderstorm. I grabbed my light and headed up from the cabin to go sit up top, cause I knew I wouldn't be able to sleep with all of the thunder. My grandpa was already sitting up top when I arrived so I sat down beside him and we both just kinda listened to the storm in silence for a while. And then we noticed something strange. There was a light coming from one of the islands. Like a flashlight sort of pointed towards our boat. Now it could have been campers, but there was no boat on our side of the island, there was no way to get onto the island from the other sides as it was too steep on the other side of the island, 
and it wasn't other boaters as it was around 4 a.m. and we were the only people anchored in the bay. The light stayed fixed on us for a few minutes before flickering out as though the light had run out of batteries, and we didn't see anything like it again. Needless to say, both I and my grandpa were both rather unnerved. Growing up in the mountains I was always well prepared for any situation. One evening during a camping trip, my friend and I decided to take a night walk. We saw another fire burning off in the distance and decided to get closer. We announced ourselves, as to not startle them, and as we got closer we noticed about eight people all wearing black robes standing around the fire in complete silence. My friend and I looked at each other and ran as fast as we could back to camp. Definitely interrupted a cult ritual. Was not prepared for that one. Me and a friend of mine, we'll call her Sally, went into these woods behind her house to smoke in this like abandoned like Amish community I guess but we're walking around and we're almost to the shacks and we both hear people talking and we see these two people. One in white and one in light blue. Well we decide to make ourselves known just in case they are hunters. We don't want to get shot you know. Well we get no reply so we walk closer and these guys are nowhere to be found. Like there was no way they could have disappeared like that. We looked for these people for 20 minutes and never found or heard anything. Neither of us had anything to protect ourselves so we picked up a couple rocks and smoked our joints and left. The whole time we could both feel someone watching us. Not super terrifying but we both felt uneasy after that. I was camping on a lake once with some friends and family up north, far enough north that there was zero light pollution from any sort of city or town. For enough north you could see the aurora on occasion. We would often see moving lights in the sky, they looked like stars and our friends would explain it away as satellites but they would zip back and forth across the sky, changing directions abruptly, crossing paths, sometimes up to five of them in one area. But that's not what this story is about. We were sitting on the lake shore late one night gathered around the campfire when suddenly this bright orange ball of fire starts rising from the lake. We thought it might be a firework set off by someone else in the area but it rose incredibly slowly. And it wasn't an ember from the fire. We were all standing on the shore with our backs to the fire at this point. It rose, I don't know how high in the air, stopped and hovered for a few seconds, and then it was gone. We never really talked about it with them because of their dismissal of the other strange thing. I wish I could ask them about it now but I have since lost contact with all but one of them who is currently an oceanographer stationed in Antarctica. Was camping on a lake once with some friends and family up north, far enough north that there was zero light pollution from any sort of city or town. For enough north you could see the aurora on occasion. We would often see moving lights in the sky, they looked like stars and our friends would explain it away as satellites but they would zip back and forth across the sky, changing directions abruptly, crossing paths, sometimes up to five of them in one area. But that's not what this story is about. We were sitting on the lake shore late one night gathered around the campfire when suddenly this bright orange ball of fire starts rising from the lake. We thought it might be a firework set off by someone else in the area but it rose incredibly slowly. And it wasn't an ember from the fire. We were all standing on the shore with our backs to the fire at this point. It rose, I don't know how high in the air, stopped and hovered for a few seconds, and then it was gone. We never really talked about it with them because of their dismissal of the other strange thing. I wish I could ask them about it now but I have since lost contact with all but one of them who is currently an oceanographer stationed in Antarctica. My family and I are avid river rafters and planned a trip in Utah as we do every year where we float about 20 miles over a week, stopping and camping riverside each night. It's incredibly peaceful and out in the middle of canyons. Oftentimes you don't see anyone else beyond an occasional ranger and other rafters. At this particular river there are already established campsites every few miles on the right side of the river. 
The left side is considered native land and you need a special permit to camp on that side. The river was running really high this year and we found ourselves nearing nightfall without finding any sort of suitable campsite as they were all washed out. Rafting in the dark is obviously not ideal or safe so we had no choice but to take a campsite on the native slash Navajo side. We figured it was too late for a ranger to patrol and we'd be up early enough to get out. We all quickly set our tents and got some rest but I remember feeling really spooked out most of the night. The next morning we woke up to see our 5 gallon water jugs, both of them, were turned completely upside down and drained out. I don't know if it was pranksters, although that area has absolutely nothing around it besides dirt and open space, or bad juju for us being on the wrong side of the river but it was terribly creepy to encounter and left us all feeling a bit weird. Our Navajo friends on the trip were equally creeped out and we got out of there as soon as possible. We had spare water tucked away on our rafts so don't worry we didn't all dehydrate. When my best friend and I were in middle school, we would often walk our dogs on this wooded trail that was located near our houses. We would occasionally run into wildlife out there like deer or fox, but the dogs, golden retriever and German shepherd, would just bark and chase them for a second. Then we would round them up and be on our way. This day when we were walking it was late in the evening and the sun was getting ready to set, and we didn't see anybody else out in the woods. We let the dogs off the leash and they were running around having a good time. The dogs were about 30 feet in front of us sniffing slash playing and just being dogs, when suddenly they both stopped almost simultaneously in the middle of the path, looked up in the sky, not too many trees in this spot, started barking and backing up cautiously with their hackers up. We tried looking to see if there was something in the sky but didn't see anything, so my friend and I looked at each other, then turned around and ran home. No idea what caused them to do this, maybe a random high frequency we couldn't hear? We did live near a military base that does a lot of testing. I was hiking with my family in a small nature reserve near here. All of a sudden we hear large crashing and branch snapping sounds. We turn behind us and see taking off from the cliff the biggest bird I have ever seen. But things about it looked off, like the legs and length of the body. Not to mention it had a really long neck and a strange shaped head. I'll never be sure what that was. We weren't in an area known for large birds. The biggest we get here in NJ are like hawks. This thing looked like it had a 40 plus foot wingspan, and was bigger than any hawk I've ever seen. I was maybe 16 at the time and was out deer hunting. I was a mile walk from home hunting in a valley and sitting on the top of a ridge on the one side overlooking a riverbed and the sun was going down. I should have left earlier but didn't want to scare the deer and figured I'd wait till they left or it was dark enough they wouldn't see me leave. When I did leave it was still light enough to somewhat see but too dark to look through my rifle scope if that makes sense. I climbed over the top of the ridge and when I did I could hear something across the dried up pond at the bottom of this side. I then seen five animals. Don't know what they were they were but they weren't canines like wolves or coyotes. They were bigger than coyotes and a lot more bulky but were super agile. They were making weird sounds I'd never heard before too. I don't know if they seen or smelled but all of a sudden they all stopped moving and went silent for a few seconds before two of them took off running and started looping around to my left and going behind me and one looped to my right while the other two stayed where they were. I had become the hunted and I was terrified. I started shouting and making a lot of noise and I never seen them for the rest of the walk home but it was the scariest moment I've ever had in the woods. We went back the next day to look for tracks but it had snowed enough that night to cover them. I won't forget that night. I was with my cousin, both of us around 13 years old, and we decided to go camping, alone, for a few days. We were in southern Chile which is normally pretty wet, even in the summer. So the day we head off, we pack food, a tent, two canteens, matches, in short everything we were going to need, and head off. 
the first leg of the way we went on quads, then we had to continue trekking by foot. Eventually, we found a nice little place by a small lagoon, lake, where we decided to set camp. Everything was going great, we fished for food, made tea, and were having a blast. Then night fell. We began seeing lights on the other side of the lake, which must have been at least a few km away, and voices. Little kid voices crying for their parents. We began shitting bricks at this point, and we each held a machete close. I don't think we slept that night. Worse, in the morning, we heard splashes close by, so cautiously we ventured out of the tent to see what was happening. A man was drowning his dog. At this point, we said f this crap, let's leave. So we packed everything up in record time, and we left within the hour, ran the couple hour hike to our quads and burnt rubber all the way back to his house. Not exactly deep wilderness but 320 acres of heavy forest down in South Oklahoma. Been stalked by a black panther at night. Had many instances of being followed and not seeing or finding any tracks afterwards. Other than the panther slash mountain lion slash cougar, whatever you want to call it, the time I was followed by the yellow eyes. Was followed for about a mile all the way back to my big granny's house. Came hauling ass through the side gate to see my GPA, dad and two uncles talking on the front porch. They saw the eyes come around the gate posts and immediately told me to grab dirt. Dove to the ground and heard nothing but thunder. Then silence. Thought I was dead, heard them calling me to the house. Got up and ran like a bitch. Left my rifle in the dirt. A fact I'm ashamed to admit. Get to the porch and turn around can still see the eyes watching us. No body, just these bright yellow eyes. Moving back and forth behind the gate. Took me a good three hours before I went to retrieve my rifle. Only then because my uncles and dad went with me to get it. I was walking down a creek bed that was mostly dry save for some groundwater here and there in a coastal redwood forest. I came across this abandoned pair of tents that looked like someone had had a mental breakdown and destroyed all of their belongings. There was a little fire spot and all sorts of junk including a bible and a nearly unreadable diary. This part isn't that scary but the only thing I could make out after the paper had been exposed for so long was something to the effect of another boy said my nose ring looks ugly, good thing I don't care what anyone thinks. It was kind of disturbing thinking of someone with a journal like that living in the woods. But yeah as I continue down this trail of strewn jackets and soup cans and prescription bottles I come to what was about a 4 foot tall cairn made with pretty large boulders but the top had some spooky ornaments on it. There was definitely a badger or raccoon skull and few other assorted bird and squirrel looking bones but then the real weird part was the femur looking bone. It was broken off pretty close to the ball joint, but it was still big enough to really freak me out. Another time I went to the area again and smelled smoke so I followed all the way to just before the camp and I could see smoke from a fire. I couldn't hear anyone talking but I just got the craziest bad vibe and suddenly got really freaked out by the height of the path I was on. Nothing too wild but counting all the funky hanging blare which things I've found in those woods I feel it's warranted. I have two things that happened to me. Background, my dad was an archery hunter. He always took me with him. We would go up Friday night and set camp. Saturday and Sunday mornings he would go out to his stand. I would make food when I got up, and hike around the campsite. Saturday afternoon we would go hike, and sometimes drive to see if we could find game to shoot, I was good at spotting and calling elk. Sunday we would get a load of firewood, and go home. So one of these times I'm out hiking around, and I find an elk wallow. I'm looking around checking it out and hear this heavy breathing a few feet away in this big bush. I look at it and realize I can see a 5 by 6 rack over the top of it. I am standing in this bull's wallow, and he is so hyped for mating he doesn't leave when he smells a human. I realize the danger I'm in and back out of there, and then hightail it to camp. Sadly my dad had a cow tag that year. 
same basic thing another time, you'd think I'd learn to not hike around alone ha. Huh? I'm out hiking, but I stopped to take a drink of water. I realized the forest around me had gone silent. No bugs, birds, anything. You don't realize true silence till something like that. I was freaking out, but kept my back to the tree, and looking all around. Never saw anything. I was too afraid to run. I knew that could get me killed. So I hang there tenish minutes about ready to piss my pants, and then all the sound starts up again. I ran. This past bow season I decided to try something new and hunt from the ground. I wasn't stalking or anything I just had my back to a fallen tree and had built up some small brush piles to break up my silhouette. I actually had a doe walk in on me at first light, not bad for the first time I ever tried it. She came in at an angle that prevented me from shooting without her busting me. I should also mention it happened to be the opening day of muzzleloader as well. The way I had positioned myself, as long as I didn't get busted she would have walked right into my shooting lane and I would have been a hunting ninja, however as her nose breaks the brush line I hear a loud gunshot go off somewhere else on the mountain and she takes off. I sit there for another 45 minutes when I hear some leaves crunching and twigs snapping. Hell yay, back in the game I thought. That's when this good old boy crests the ridge with is definitely not a muzzle loader. I started to move a little to try and get his attention so that he knew not to walk on top of me but then he shouldered his rifle and started looking through the optics. Three times he swung that muzzle across my body with his finger on the trigger. I froze, I tried not to breath, I was terrified that if he saw me or if I spooked him that he would shoot me. So there we are in this Mexican standoff for what felt like hours, but was probably only 10 minutes. I don't know if he saw me or not. I was wearing my Marine Corps issued woodlands and I learned the art of camouflage at the USMC Jungle Warfare Training Center, he may or may not have seen me. After those few breathless minutes he wandered off back over the ridge and I got out of there. He was not in any camouflage and I'm pretty positive I may have accidentally stumbled upon a ginseng honey hole, a moonshine operation, or one of the famous Appalachian pot farms. I won't be hunting out there again. My mom and stepdad owned a few acres up in the mountains. I wouldn't call it deep wilderness, but it was pretty far out in the sticks. They had a trailer on it and would go hang out on weekends. The first time I was there with them, we were sitting around a campfire, drinking, shooting the shit, stuff like that. I stepped away from the group a bit to have a cigarette. So I'm standing there at the edge of the clearing, smoking away, and I realize I see eyes glowing just beyond the tree line. Like, several sets of eyes just staring at me. I didn't know if they were house cats, bears, raccoons, mountain lions or what. I put out my cigarette and basically ran back to the group. My mom and stepdad were all nonchalant about it. Oh yeah, there are mountain lions, coyotes, bears, all sorts of big animals up here. Bastards. Me and two of my friends would wander around our neighborhood for hours at night on the weekends when we were kids. We had been all over the neighborhood except one spot of road that was fenced off because they had stopped construction of road many years prior. So the road continued after the fence for about 300 feet or so and just dropped off at a stream cutting through some properties that were wooded. Anyways I had asked what was beyond the road and they didn't know so we decided to check it out. We walked about halfway up the road from where the fence is and where it ends and all of us had that deep loud ringing that you sometimes get in your ears. We dropped to our knees holding our ears freaked out and waited for it to pass after about 20 seconds or so. We all looked at each other confirming that we all just experienced the same thing and booked it out. No idea why that would happen to all of us at the same time. My dad, my brother and I took our camper van away camping one weekend. On the first night at about 2 AM there was a massive bang and for a few seconds the van shook violently. 
My dad jumped up and ran outside to see what it was but there was nothing there and no damage to the van. He decided it must have been a dream and was about to go back to bed when I heard my brother ask him what caused the van to shake and my dad had no answer. We all went back to sleep and forgot about it until the morning when we got up to take the dog for a walk. My aunt and uncle had their camper parked up next to ours, as we passed them my uncle came running out with this terrified look on his face. He said that at about 2 am his van shook like mad and there was a loud bang but he was too afraid to go out and check what it was so he had been waiting for us to get up. At first we thought it a deer must have hit the van or something but it shook for more than just a split second it was a few seconds at least. Also, what is the chances of one deer running into two different vans? Neither van had any damage to them at all. We don't often get earthquakes in the UK, and there was nothing in the news about any quakes in the morning. Eventually we just wrote it off as some strange happening and forgot about it. It's not really scary, just unexplainable. I was hiking in the back country of Sequoia National Park with some friends. We were trudging along this very steep granite chute that was carved from glaciers. It was absolutely breathtaking both from beauty and exhaustion. Anyway, we didn't see anyone the whole way. We came upon an old rusted can of tuna. It looked ancient from weathering. It had been opened and seemed like it was open recently because the tuna was still wet and smelly. No one was in sight and we didn't see anyone the whole time during our trip. Also, unless the person went cross country we would have seen them because it was a dead end peak trail. So anyway, I have no idea how the tuna was opened or by whom. It was a little unsettling at the time, but only for a moment. I grew up in a house that was surrounded by woods, so I've heard my fair share of different animal noises slash howls slash shrieks slash etc. It was the night before I was moving away to college. Everything was packed, except I realized I left my headphones out in my car. It's around midnight, and I go outside to snag the headphones. I decide to give myself a moment to take it in and appreciate the peace and quiet of the woods I'd grown up in. After two to three minutes, I hear this noise unlike anything I've ever heard in my life. It was a howl at first that sorta of slurred into the scream, roar. I could tell directly where it was coming from, about 30 feet away just beyond the foliage but I couldn't see anything. I froze for about 15 seconds before sprinting back inside. Both parents and friend heard the noise too but nobody knew what it was. This past summer, I was at Philmont Scout Ranch, in the mountains of New Mexico. For anyone familiar with Philmont, this incident took place at Elkhorn, a trail camp east of Head of Dean and south of Flume Canyon. It's on the edge of the Ponnell Complex burn scar, so there's not much for tree cover, and a lot of burned trees on the ground. We went to bed early that night, after having dragged a burrow up the trail from Flume Canyon. Not long after the sun went down, we started hearing a knocking noise. It sounded almost like a woodblock instrument. It was too slow and too deep in pitch to be a woodpecker. We'd hear it every 15 minutes or so for a couple hours, and then it just quit. I tried knocking on some of the burned trees the next morning to see if I could imitate the sound, but basically every tree I tried was just charcoal and crumbled as soon as I touched it. Thanks for watching. Be sure to subscribe for daily stories. We at Horror Den of Misfits really enjoy this, and your support would be appreciated.